Okay, we are live. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, everyone. Sorry to have the class so late. So this is uh, yet another session of our reproductive immunology class. So today's topic is a very interesting one. It is in continuation with what we spoke yesterday. Uh, so today's topic is uh, anti-TPO antibodies, whether it is relevant and many of us are uh, uh, gynecologists who deal with recurrent pregnancy loss and also fertility specialists who are dealing with uh, recurrent implantation failures or unexplained infertility and uh, fertility patients as such. Some may do it as a routine, some will do it uh, in specific cases. So uh, where it actually adds value as a gynecologist and whether it is really important to have an endocrinologist opinion when we are trying to do such tests and how to interpret it uh, as a basic test for all uh, general gynecologists is what the class is all about. It's uh, a very practical class and how to tackle your patients who who you have advised anti-TPO antibody test. So that is what the class is all about. So over to you, Dr. Jay. Uh, so friends, one thing I want to give a disclaimer. Like all our reproductive immunology classes uh, and almost all our classes from here on, we will be sharing what are the good practice points and what are the guidelines suggesting. Okay. So uh, I almost always do an anti-TPO antibody. And if the report is positive, it's just positive or negative, right? So just for you to understand the cutoff, if you ever read the report, some laboratories have a cutoff of 35. Some laboratories have a cutoff of 45. Okay. It's simply dependent on the kit. So the kit which I use has a cutoff of 35. It is done very routinely in our hospital. It is done on our standard, uh, uh, you know, hormone analysis machine. I use Vidas 3 for that. And the report is usually available to the patients within one hour, 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, if the anti-TPO is positive, that is when we always send the patient to our physician, that is Dr. Pratik Gopani. And then he and myself manages these patients together. If it is negative, nothing to be doing, chapter is over. Right? So I will start with very simple understanding of this entire topic. So I just hope my uh, this thing uh, screen is visible. Yeah. 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 So anti-TPO antibody is a very, very simple thing. It's actually the simplest thing which you can understand when you are a practicing physician. So in your neck, you have this gland, which is called as the thyroid gland, right? Everybody has it as long as you have a neck. Okay. So what is going to be happening in this situation is that anti-TPO. So TPO, that is thyroid peroxidase. Guys, can you see this? What I'm writing, please let me know. Yeah. Okay. So, and th this thyroid peroxidase is an enzyme which converts thyroglobulin. Okay. And it converts them into T3, T4, triadothyronine and T4. Uh, okay. So, anti TPO means an antibody which is going to go and attack the thyroid peroxidase enzyme. Now, when it goes and attacks the thyroid peroxidase enzyme, it is very simple. It blocks the conversion, reducing the levels of T3 and T4. T4 in the blood goes down. Automatically, what goes to the signal to the brain is that they have to increase production of TSH so that thyroglobulin levels can go up. Right? This is very, very simple feedback loop. And as a result of this, you can divide elevated TSH into two types, which we all know. One is hypothyroidism, which is pretty evident, which we also called as overt hypothyroidism. And second is subclinical hypothyroidism, right? So this is something which we already know. This is the basic which you need to understand. Simultaneously, you need to understand why as a gynecologist, we need to look at the neck in the first place, right? So there are patients, there are going to be patients who are going to come to you with a history of having had more than two recurrent pregnancy losses or more than one IVF cycle failed, okay? Or they are going to have unexplained infertility, right? In all these situations, like how the patient would have been evaluated, you would want to look at TSH. Something, this is something which you have to do. This is something which you would want to do. Mandatorily, you would want to look at TSH in all these situations. I will just uh, make some space here, yeah? 
So you would mandatorily want to look at TSH in all these situations. So if the TSH of the patient is less than 0 0.5, okay, very simple. If it is less than 0 0.5, then in all situations, you are trying to look at something called as hyperthyroidism. In hyperthyroidism, when you look, when you are wanting to look, look at it, you want to do free T4 and based on levels of free T4, you would like to know what you need to do further, right? Then comes the second 0 0.5 to 2.5. That is when your TSH level is there. And then the third will come between 2.5 or let's say just more than 2.5. I know the ideal cutoff is three. So I can also make this more than three and I can convert this also to be 0 0.5 to 3.0. Okay. Now in all this situation, if the patient has had recurrent pregnancy losses, kindly do an anti-TPO. If the IVF cycle has failed before and it has not been done, kindly do an anti-TPO. And unexplained infertility for more than five years, okay, kindly do an anti-TPO. So you are going to be doing an anti-TPO in all the situations. Now when you do an anti-TPO, by the way, if the value is more than this thing, you must do an anti-TPO. So if the anti-TPO is negative, that means you don't have to do anything. But if the anti-TPO is positive, right? If the anti-TPO value turns out to be positive, then you need to understand that these values, which are present here, you need to give very simple thyroid supplementation. Just remember this word. You need to give thyroid supplementation plus vitamin D. This is important. And you need to correct it back to this level. Even if the patient is euthyroid. Now, these values are called euthyroid. But if they have RPL, previous IVF cycle failed or unexplained infertility with anti-TPO positive, then in all that situations, you need to consider to add thyroid supplementation. Now, this thyroid supplementation is basically going to be driven by the weight of the patient. Okay, but standard, we don't really like to give 25 micrograms to a lot of people. I have always seen my physician starting with 50 micrograms in this situation. So definitely 50 micrograms to be taken once in the morning before you have breakfast. Keep the bottle which is not exposed to sunlight. You need not refrigerate the bottle. Maintain and make sure that the patient is taking the anti-TPO supplement. I mean the thyroid supplementation properly and monitor the thyroid levels of the patient usually after six weeks. If you monitor the thyroid levels of the patient after six weeks, usually there is going to be or there may be some amount of correction which is going to happen. You need to allow this correction to happen before you do the next embryo transfer in anti-TPO positive. You need this correction to happen when the patient is undergoing a natural conception for at least one to two months. But remember one thing. Anti-TPO is a beautiful known cause of having an issue. So the guidelines are absolutely crystal clear. The flowchart which I presented to you is basically all the guidelines. And one more thing, all the guidelines are very clear about the fact that there is hardly any role of giving immune therapy, steroids, IVIG, LIT, thymosin alpha, tacrolimus, intralipids in presence of an isolated anti-TPO. Okay. One more thing you have to remember. Anti-TPO, some research is saying that, you know, it can cause slightly poor quality. That's why you have to correct it. Some research is saying that it can interfere with implantation. It can interfere the entire endometrium. That is why you need to correct it. Because all these hormones, this TSH where it is getting released from in the brain now, in the pituitary, that FSH and LH region is also very close by. And as a result of this, some disturbances do occur. That is what the science believes. And as a result of this, so much stress is being made on correction of these things. I want to tell you two, three more things. Very, uh, you know, some guidelines have clearly stated that if anti-TPO is positive, but the patient is euthyroid, that means the patient is absolutely normal. That means TSH is between 0 0.5 to 2.5. Then you may or may not even require thyroid correction. But... In a situation like India, at least in our practice, at least in my practice, we offer correction to everyone. Okay. The guidelines are very clear. HRA guidelines as well as ASRM guidelines. They are a little old. They are approximately six, seven years old. And they are of the opinion that you may or may not give the correction. But we normally always give the correction. One more thing I want to tell you. 
when an anti tpo patient continues pregnancy try to monitor the tsh level once every 3 months during pregnancy the as soon as cardiac activity is positive just remember if you were giving 50 before you need to give 75 if you are giving 75 before you need to give 100 the the amount of supplementation which is going to require goes up by around 30% that is what our endocrinologist would normally say but in a practical situation if it is 25 it goes to 50 if it is 50 it goes to 75 if it is 75 it goes to 100 something like that you can just keep that in mind i don't normally do it on my own as soon as people are pregnant in the hospital i will 100% make sure that an endocrinologist or a physician because we have an in house physician he will see the patient and he will give the patient in written as to what they need to do i also understand this new cute little thing Uh, about selenium supplementation i personally think selenium supplementation is not uh, it just sounds cute but nothing beyond that okay uh, no such requirement i also understand a lot of papers and lot of doubts are going to come about iodine supplementation remember the salt which is available in india okay uh, tata namak simple that is already iodized theek hai na so that if you are eating salt basically you've got iodine which has come to your body any which ways you need not worry about that the only other vitamin which may play some role is vitamin d and because it plays a role i mentioned about thyroid plus vitamin d supplementation explicitly because vitamin d is very important when you are supplementing with anti tpo now one final thing before i conclude if you are looking at anti tpo please look at other things also for example anti nuclear anti body because tpo is a anti tpo is basically an ana positive thing right so basically you need to look at all the other antibodies as well so please go through our master class which we presented before that is master class number 6 because in a routine practice you are going to have anti tpo plus ana you will have anti tpo plus rheumatoid factor you will have anti tpo plus something else your clinical presentation is going to be combination of anti tpo with something and as a result of this you need to not just manage the anti tpo you need to manage the other things as well right with this i conclude because this is something which is so common i'll be happy to answer some questions and uh, hopefully because the flow chart is so straight forward i mean you can read about it a lot just divide the flow chart into these values and i think life becomes pretty easy for everyone right but i'll be happy to answer questions so tell me this i mean uh, do you give isolon uh, in cases where there is tpo antibodies positive no not in isolated okay do you give hcq uh, in no. cases where there is tpo positive not at all okay so in cases where there is tpo antibodies we are suspecting either there is hashimotos uh, or there could be graves disease and we use these uh, antibodies to track the disease and the uh, control later on so many endocrinologists whenever the tpo antibodies come positive and if the tsh levels are normal they refuse to give importance to uh, the tpo antibody being positive absolutely so correct your, yeah what is your opinion on uh, this uh, as a reproductive immunologist so so you know remember one thing if the thyroid see that thyroid gland no has a lot of capacity to maintain new thyroid levels understanding it can automatically increase the level of thyroglobulin if there is blockage somewhere we don't need to go and tell it understanding so all this will start to show only once that thyroid is exhausted honestly speaking so normally even if the endocrinologist will say that you know thyroid supplementation may or may not be necessary that is as per the guidelines but in patients with previous abortions in patients with previous ivf failures it is good to give thyroid supplementation if anti tpo is positive despite being normal value that's exactly what i told in the flow chart so uh, imagine like if the anti tpo antibodies are positive now and if if it is say around 1100 so it is kind of an immunological attack on the thyroid gland yeah. so after 6 months if you repeat it and if you see that the value is less than 25 so that means this wave of uh, uh, this whole antibody the antibodies working on against the thyroid yeah. you think it is all gone temporarily yes because you really don't know when that activation will occur due to what trigger factor that yeah. could be right from viral infections that could be due to you know sepsis many many things can uh, percolate and cause that trigger factor madam 
true true see that is so, the reason that is the reason why patients with autoimmune thyroiditis basically are usually called by endocrinologist every 3 to 6 months yeah correct so uh, tell me this you said that in spite of the tsh being normal you still would like to supplement with uh, uh the thyroid supplements 50 micrograms okay but and you repeat it after say like 6 weeks if you find that the tsh has become less than 0.5 so do you stop it at that point or do you continue the same uh, dose you continue monday to friday stop saturday sunday okay okay fine uh so how do you think this vitamin d and uh, thyroid are related i mean do you see any any strong correlation uh, in them or vitamin d supplementation should be done for all infertility patients madam any which way if we don't do it patients will self do it yeah that is true instead Because, of spending so yeah. much money on that vitamin d assessment give see the cost of vitamin d test no we we'll cover yeah. vitamin d supplementation for at least at least 6 to 8 months correct true very true yeah i'm done arti do you have any questions please um, jay very good um, inputs very practical i just had one question you've covered sort of everything uh, how routinely would you repeat uh, thyroid antibody testing 8 weeks so you mean to say suppose the patient... sorry tsh is 8 weeks You yes, ask... it's epic. I am talking about antibody testing. Suppose if we are antibody positive, you four to six months, ma'am. So every six months you will repeat it. Yeah. And if the patient continues to be U thyroid and antibody positive, there's nothing else you're going to do other so than. Supplement. I want to. I want to tell you something here. There are patients who come to know that there is anti TPO antibody once they get cardiac activity. Hmm. Okay, because hmm. that is when they routinely test for thyroid. Hmm. and if thyroid is let's say 16 suppose tsh that is when they get scared and when we do anti tpo antibody we come to know at that time mm. their pregnancy is also continue very routinely ma'am so mm. actually the actual correlation between anti tpo antibody and rpl or rif is still not 100% you know mm. Mm. and that is the reason why you should not uh, why you should not so frequently get mm. that mindset or give that undue importance okay also you have noticed that there is more association of pcos and endometriosis patients with uh, thyroid autoimmunity like all autoimmunity all autoimmunity is more in this this group okay i think i'm done yeah kiran sir i don't do anti tg that is i don't do anti thyroglobulin antibodies i don't do that very frequently hardly any role of doing that that is to be done when there is no correction basically when you give uh, when you are given thyroid supplementation and then there is no correction that's when you do the anti tg also yeah so thank you very much it was a very nice lecture short and sweet and to the point so all these lectures like we have now finished seventh class on reproductive immunology so, so these lectures are filled with practical tips and people who want to start doing reproductive immunology or patient uh, or treat patients with uh, recurrent miscarriages and recurrent implantation failure these classes are going to be very very helpful in your yeah there will be a reproductive immunology workshop in project pelvis speak more and more elaborately on things which many people don't understand so it is going to be like you know a very very useful session which uh, many points will not be covered in any other uh, uh, say like academic uh, webinars or uh, in other platforms so please make you use of an opportunity where you will get like you know a to z about the reproductive immunology in uh, the conference so we welcome you all for the conference so these sessions will continue but uh, we would love to have all of you and take your uh, uh, say like questions and uh, answer based on our practical uh, experiences seeing so many patients with uh, uh, problems in immunological aspects of uh, fertility and also in early pregnancy uh, so we uh, we wish to see all of